now if we've got too much weight, you can never lift that nose. That nose just does not have enough elevator authority to lift that nose. We can work with a couple of inches off each side, but we all have a center of gravity. Watch what happens when I take a step out. Now I can lean further because I have a greater what? Center of gravity, right? And wherever I step. So we're working with the center of gravity just like an airplane has. Now we've talked about the two important component, components of an airplane, and you know, the wing and the tail. Now, here's what an airplane looks like when it gets started. <laughs> okay, have a little imagination, okay. Here is the fuselage. The fuselage, this is where we're gonna start. This is our starting point to build an airplane, is the fuselage. And we put it right there, and right in the middle of this fuselage, it balances. Wow, we're ready to go, right? In fact, we can move it just a hair on each side, and it's going to be generally balanced. But folks, it's tough to fly something like this because it doesn't have lift and it doesn't have a rudder, it doesn't have an empennage, so we've got to start building an empennage, okay? So the first thing that we want to do is build that empennage here. We want to put the weight on it and put the, oh my gosh, hmm, we got a problem here, don't we? We've got too much weight in the back and nothing in the front. So why don't we, let's turn this around. why don't we go ahead then and put the empennage there and say, well, you know, we need an engine anyway, so why don't we go ahead and work with putting an engine in the front? Well, that's not going to work either. Too, we're too nose heavy, right? We're too, so let's work the center of gravity so we get something that's stabilized. Now here is something that is controllable and you have to work with me here. What we talk about when something is controllable, it means that a pilot through energy and effort and certain pressures can actually control the pitch of this aircraft and they can control it. These are just straws. But watch what happens. I mean, these are just little straws. I can get it to pitch up or down, up or down. But if I were to slide it off to the side and become nose heavy, there is nothing that's gonna give me the controllability of this airplane. And that happens, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes when you're burning fuel off. In fact, there are bonanzas out that have a fifth seat in the back. Do you know that? A fifth seat. But it's placard. You can't fly with a fifth person back there if the fuel is down so much. Because as the fuel drains off the, out of the tanks, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And now the weight starts shifting in the back. But now if we've got an engine and we've got the empennage, and we've got a good start because right in the middle is where we're going to put, not necessarily the middle, but we're going to put the wings. And it still balances. <coughs> and now we're going to put the fuel and the passengers. And folks, we can continue to build on this as long as we stay in that center of gravity. Once we move that center of gravity, okay, look at this, it doesn't matter. You just build on that center of gravity if your weight is in um, according to your POH. <coughs> now, the center of gravity, this is interesting. Let's look at a couple of, uh, this, is, this is really going to be, Mark, you're going to have to help me with this. Uh -oh. Let's, if you would, Mark, cool. let's call this a... Uh, tomahawk. Okay, tomahawk is about 24 from the nose all the way to the back. Okay, 24 feet. Okay, that's it. So, well, we've got a lot to work with with the center of gravity, right? I mean, look at that. I mean, just, but wait a minute. We only have a cabin, and that cabin space is only about five foot. So I'll keep bringing this in 
the cabin space from the back to the front is only about five feet. So, oh, okay. Here, I got it. Thanks, Mark. Here's the cabin area. Okay, here's the cabin area right here. So there should be the center of gravity. We'll just load this tomahawk up and we'll just fly away, right? Not so. Because the center of gravity is not half that. It's not a third of that. It's not even that much. Here's the center of gravity that you have to work with. That's it. That's all. Right there, you have to establish that equilibrium of that airplane. If you don't, you have no controllability of that plane. Now, in the warrior, you might be looking at 10 inches. That's all, just 10 inches. And do you know you can actually look down and feel the center of gravity as that airplane pivots around that point? As it yaws and banks, turns, pitches, you can just feel that. It's turning right here. That's why if anything is further back, that's why if you have something aft, that, that movement of that heavy object could push something through the floorboard of that airplane. So just kind of be aware that uh, what you're looking at is not a whole lot. So you want to be sure that your center of gravity uh, is there. Just to give you some ideas of what we're working with, the arrow has a center of gravity of 13 inches. The 172, approximately 12 inches, a little bit more. And here's something interesting, too, uh, I think, is that your twin airplanes, which you think would be a huge center of gravity, is only eight or nine inches of the center of gravity range. That's all it is. Now, we've talked about working with controllability. Can I control this airplane? And if the center of gravity has been met and you're working in the range, the airplane will become stable and controllable. More controllable than stable. Now, the manufacturers knew that we probably wouldn't be the best pilots and we would unload the aircraft differently. The CG of an airplane is forward of the lift range of an airplane. So if we're flying along, lift is acting what to the airplane? Perpendicular, right? Perpendicular. So here it is, it's flying along, it's acting perpendicular. Now if we stall, what's going to happen to the nose if the center of gravity is forward? It pitches down. Saves our life, right? But if you have loaded the airplane aft beyond those limits and it stalls, guess what it's going to do? It's going to go into maybe a spin that you're not going to be able to get out of. You're not going to have any forward elevator authority on it because there is not enough weight for it. I have heard people even say that in a crisis, they have unfastened their seat belts and slid forward and almost climbed on top of the uh, instrument panel just to get the weight forward enough so they could break it. It is, it's critical. Now, just the reverse happens. What if we have too much weight forward? Well, if we have too much weight forward and we try to put the nose down, it's not going to come down because there's just too much weight. And we see this a lot as we are flying cross countries. We need to get our balance done before we take off. We need to also do a balance after we get there. Mentally, we've already flown it. So if we're going to burn fuel off of the airplane, what's going to happen to the weight and balance? What's going to happen to that balance of that aircraft? And that's items that are critical, so critical to that as you probably know, the first of the year that at Beach 1900 and Charlotte, North Carolina, January 8th, stalled out and crashed. Okay? Now they're looking at the weight and they're looking at the balance very, very heavily. 
Now, if you look at, uh, if you think that um, these turbo props can pull that kind of weight, they can't. What they have found in the recorder was that that airplane pitched up. Now you figure if this is a 90 degree peak, 90 degree angle, it was at 52 degrees. 52 degrees and stalling. The elevator authority did not work. Now they did find the elevator rigging to be off about 1.8 inches. That only hampered probably controllable controllability of that airplane. But the fact is that who knows who was loaded in the back, how much baggage was loaded in the back. And this is what happens when you are too heavy in the rear that you'll get a pitch up and a stall if you're out of limits in the back. If you're out of limits in the front taking off, you can't get that nose up. And these should be some of the indicators to tell you there's something wrong. We need to relook at this uh, weight and balance. In fact, it's not uncommon, folks, out west to see these people going skiing, throwing their skis in the back, and the plane taxis and starts bumping on its tail. It happens. It's, it's crazy, but it happens. So be aware of, of, your, of what you're able to do and control the airplane. The other thing is we talk about stability. We just talked about the fact that if a plane does stall out and it's been rigged properly, the nose will fall. To what point? To that point that it's been trimmed. So if it's been trimmed at 70 and it stalls, it'll pitch down to 70, but notice the oscillation. It'll pitch down further the first time. It'll come back up again. If you do absolutely nothing, it'll come back up, up again, reach a point, and then the second dive will only be about half the pitch down to the other. And as the plane continues to oscillate, it'll oscillate slower and slower and slower until uh, it's stable again. This is what we call stability in an airplane. It will work only if we adhere to the limits of our weight and our balance. And um, it, it becomes a problem. And one other thing too that uh, might help. Uh, some people, uh, when they're working a weight and balance, they say, well, where do I start my measurement from? Well, it varies. It could be the firewall. It could be the front of the prop. It could be the front of the cowling. Whatever it is, it's always that uniform measurement. And you say, well, what are we measured in? Inches, kilometers, millimeters? It doesn't matter as long as they're consistent and as long as you calibrate the measurements that you're using. So it really, it, it doesn't matter, just so that you're consistent um, with your numbers. Do your weight and balances before you leave. Do your weight and balances mentally. And um, understand, too, that if you get into any turbulence, we'll be talking about maneuverability. Maneuverability is only the, is that speed. And where do we find maneuverability on the uh, airspeed indicator? You don't, because it changes with the weight. The heavier it is, the higher it is. The lighter it is, the lower it is. So it's not there. But that's important strictly because it keeps the integrity of the airplane together. Because we want what to happen before what happens. We want it to stall before it starts coming <laughs> apart. Right, exactly. So that's maneuverability. So please continue to read up on and understand what stability is, controllability, and also maneuverability and do your weight and balances. Don't forget how to do them, they're critical. And if you have any problem taxing an airplane and it doesn't feel right. In fact, I have my clients that I work with as we're taxiing out, I ask them. I say, do you feel anything unusual? Does something feel strange to you? And if they say, no, this is about what I feel, that's great. Your sensory perceptions are good on the ground, but if it starts nosing up, and ladies, I've, I've done, ladies and gentlemen, I've done that. 
I've loaded a pickup truck with firewood and took it across Tampa, and that front end was coming up like that. I knew something was wrong. Too much weight in the back, and you can feel those uh, those type things. Do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Do they finish up the demonstration that shows when you're overloading the front or back difficulty or the difference in controllability using those straws? Yes. Yeah, the straw. Now, this. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Now, no matter how much weight I put on this, it's not going to get just about right here. But these straws will bend just like your controlling surfaces will bend before that weight will ever come up. And it's, it just works on the same principle as a seesaw or teeter totter that you have one person that gets on and the other one's high up in the air and you tease them. Did y'all do that? Did you? Oh, you did it! Oh my gosh, I, I did it too. So anyway, but um, that's the same thing. So now if we've got too much weight, you can never lift that nose. That nose just, you do not have enough elevator authority to lift that nose, it's not gonna come up. But when it's in balance, you've got, you've got the weight that you need in balance that even this, before that weight will ever come up. And it's, it just works on the same principle as a seesaw or teeter-totter, that you have one person that gets on and the other one's high up in the air and you tease them. Did y'all do that? Did you? Oh, you did it! Oh my gosh, I, I did it too. So anyway, but um, that's the same thing. So now if we've got too much weight, you can never lift that nose. That nose just, you do not have enough elevator authority to lift that nose, it's not going to come up. But when it's in balance, you've got you've got the weight that you need in balance. That even this, even pitch down, look at this, I can still control it if it's within weight. Same thing if you've got too much in the back, there's no way that that nose is going to come down. So just um, use that as a mental exercise on what you're working with, and um, just keep us safe flying, doing the weight and balance, understanding the stability, controllability, and maneuvering of your aircraft. Now next month, I'm not sure if we're going to have a couple of things. Well, it's one louder, isn't it?